Haley stood in front of the glass back door with a mug in hand. She clasped it as she watched her dog Druid pace back and forth and then pause to watch the house. Haley noticed Druid acting strange about a month after they moved into the Victorian home. At first, Druid would venture by himself to each room freely and lounge around, but now he follows either Haley or her husband Akio, even sitting outside of the bathroom if either of them were inside. You're watching Druid? Akio asked behind her. Haley almost dropped her mug as she shook in place. Jeez, Akio, you nearly made me pee my pants, Haley said. Oh, sorry, Akio said as he peered at her. What's wrong? You remember I told you that Druid has been acting really weird lately? Yeah. Well, I think it's getting worse. What do you think it is? Akio said as he tore a banana from a bunch hanging from a banana hanger on the kitchen counter. Haley took a sip of her coffee. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that we moved to this new house and he hasn't adjusted to it, she said. Akio bit into the banana and shrugged. Maybe. You're not concerned? Well, yeah, but if it's what you said. I don't know if it is. I'm just guessing. Maybe we should take him to the vet. They're probably going to tell you there's nothing wrong, Akio said, dumping the peel into a compost bucket near the back door. What if there is? and we decide not to bother, Haley said, walking past Akio and placing her mug into the farmer's sink. Look, Akio approached Haley and embraced her. Why don't we wait until we have a firm budget fleshed out, and then we'll make an appointment. It won't take long to settle that and save some money, okay? Haley nodded. Barking drew her attention back to the door. She walked over and watched as Druid barked at the house. Druid snored softly as he slept in his bed near the foot of Haley and Akio's bed. Akio was sound asleep, his back to Haley, while she read from her e-reader with the aid of a table lamp. Haley yawned and glanced at her phone that rested on her lap. It was twelve minutes after ten. Before turning off the lamp, she glanced down at Druid. He was still sleeping, but this time his back legs were twitching and his eyes were fluttering. Haley stirred and blinked a few times, bringing her view into focus. She glanced at the side of her bed and noticed a shadow within the darkness. The street lamp shone through the edges of the curtain, casting a gray hue to the room. Turning towards the shadow, she whispered Druid's name. No sound came, but she could see the shadow heaving as if it was breathing deeply. Haley slowly reached her hand out, but before she could rest her hand on the dog... Druid sniffed. She paused, as she realized that it came from the foot of the bed where she last saw Druid. Her hand recoiled. The shadow began to grow, as if it were standing. Haley shrank back, pushing into Akio. He woke with a groan. What's going on? Akio asked. Haley tried to speak, but her throat squeezed, and she stared at the growing mass. There was a click and light flooded the room. Where the shadow had been was only the nightstand and the vanity next to it. Akio touched Haley's shoulder. Are you all right? Haley trembled under his hand. I, I, I thought I saw something, she said. Akio searched the room from the bed. I don't see anything unusual. Maybe it was Druid? That's what I thought, but... She began... Akio rubbed her shoulder. Do you want me to get you water? Haley nodded. She watched Akio slip out of the bedroom and down the stairs. Sighing, her eyes landed on Druid, who stared at her from his bed. Having only 30 minutes before leaving for work, Haley rushed down the stairs, being careful not to stumble down. Akio had left about 40 minutes earlier to join in on the morning commute, and Druid was in the living room chewing on one of his toys. She passed him on the way to the kitchen to grab her travel mug and lunch bag. Double-checking the back door and the automatic feeder, she fumbled with the items in hand as she raced past Druid. Upon reaching the door, she paused and turned back. 
Druid was staring at the sofa as he sat, his tail wagging on the rug. Haley glanced at the sofa and then back at Druid. She stepped closer to the mixed terrier, who hadn't noticed her. Haley studied the sofa, and for a brief moment she could see an indentation disappearing. Dropping the travel mug and lunch bag, she staggered back. Druid turned on Haley and began to bark. Drew, 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 it's, it's me, Haley said as she raised her hands. Druid approached Haley, snarling, and as if by command, he stopped and sat. Haley scanned the sofa and then the living room. Druid continued to stare at her. Druid is a healthy three-year-old, Dr. Acosta said as he pushed his lens up his nose. He sat on a short stool across from Haley and Akio. Well, that's good news, Akio said, glancing at Haley. Haley peered at Druid, who sat on the waiting table, his tail twitching. Are you sure? she asked. Well, yes, his blood work from last week came back fine, and his exam didn't turn up anything, Dr. Acosta said as he peered at his paperwork. Well, he is still acting strange after our last visit, Haley said as she glanced down. I think it's affecting me because I... She stopped as she peered at Dr. Acosta and then at Akio. Dr. Acosta cleared his throat. <clears throat> yes, well, Druid is fine. There's nothing to worry about. Haley trudged along Akio as he held Druid by the leash. After Druid jumped into the back seat of their SUV, Akio and Haley got in. Akio was about to start the car and stopped. What were you going to say to the doctor? He asked. Haley peered at Akio, who wore a deep frown on his tanned face. Nothing really, she said. It didn't seem like nothing, Akio said, shrugging. Haley sighed. I'm still seeing things. You mean the shadow? No, there's been other things that have happened. Like what? You're either going to laugh at me or think I'm crazy. Try me. Akio said as he turned towards her. I... I think there's something or someone in the house. Akio frowned, waiting for her to continue. Like some kind of presence. Like a ghost? Haley stared out the windshield. I don't know. I thought you don't believe in that stuff. I don't, Haley said, pulling out her brown hair. I don't know anymore. I, I just know that there's something going on. Haven't you seen it? Akio shook his head. From the back, Druid whimpered. Sorry, boy. We'll get going. Akio said and started up the car. The sun rays hit Haley's body relentlessly as she lay on her patio lounger with a library book in hand. Akio was preparing the grill for some hamburgers, and Druid was yanking a rope across the lawn. Haley had checked out the book from the public library on the history of the neighborhood. She was hoping to narrow her research to at least the block that they lived in and find out who the previous owners of their house were. Nothing of interest had materialized. The book in Haley's hand was promising, since it explained the start of the neighborhood and the prominent people that helped. There was a sizzle, and then the scent of meat as the hamburger touched a scorching grill. Haley's stomach grumbled in response. She turned a page and saw the image of a stern figure. He wore a trim mustache and clean-cut suit, set in sepia. The caption read that he was Willard Bulger, and he was a mine mogul that owned various properties in the area back in the 1800s. Haley scanned the paragraphs below and noticed a copy of an old newspaper clipping. The headline read that he was exonerated for the murder of a family, whose remains were never found. Haley's eyes widened as she read the end. According to the article, the family lived on her street. A nudge on her leg drew her away from the article she was reading. Druid, let me finish this article first, and then we can play with the rope, Haley said without looking. Haley? Akio said. Haley sighed. What? 
she said as she glanced at Akio and then at Druid. Druid sat next to her with something dirty in his mouth. It was about a foot long, white, and had splintered edges. Akio approached Druid slowly. As Haley studied the object, it became increasingly clear what it was that Druid had in his mouth, and she screamed. <coughs> After a series of questions were asked, the forensics team got to work on digging a hole in Haley and Akio's backyard. They waited in the dining room area with Druid, who laid in his bed with some annoyance in having the bone taken from him. Haley stared at him. It took almost a whole bag of treats to get him to release the bone. Druid had raised his hackles and snarled at them, and had continued to do so well after the forensics team arrived. Druid eventually let it go on his own, dropping it on the wooden floor with a clatter and trotting into the guest room as if called in. The back door opened, and one of the forensics walked in. So far, we only have located one more. Of course, there might be more, and they might be scattered across the yard. Do you have friends or family to stay with? Or maybe you all can check into a hotel for a short while? He asked as his mouth cover bobbed on his chin. We don't know anyone else here, and we don't really have the budget to stay at a hotel. Akio said, and Haley noticed his ears turning red. Well, we'll try to keep the disturbance at a minimal. The forensic said, and went out the back door. Haley had her thumb suspended over the call button on her phone. She double-checked the number she dialed and sighed. Her co-worker, Lulu, had recommended calling this number after she had told her what had happened. Haley trusted her, yet she had doubts as to whether what she was about to do would work. She glanced at Druid, who ate ravenously, lapping up the dry food in gulps from the back of the kitchen. Above, Akio was playing with his video game, his usual Friday night ritual. She can hear the sounds of gunfire and sci-fi sound effects throbbing down the stairs. Her thumb landed on the button, and she wasn't sure if she had wanted to or because her thumb got tired. Someone picked up after the fourth ring. Hello? A dry, papery voice answered. Hi, I'm Haley, calling for Miss Vesper, Haley said, using her work tone. She shook her head, realizing it was unnecessary. This is she. Did Lulu give you my number? Yes, yes she did. You knew that from just me calling? Haley asked. No, no, Lulu told me you were calling, Miss Vesper said. Oh. So I guess Lulu told you that I'm not only a centero, but a clairvoyant. Yes, Haley said, feeling her cheeks burn. Do you understand what I do? Yes, Lulu explained some of it to me. I need you to truly understand what Santeria is, Miss Haley. Miss Vesper coughed. <laughs> All of your senses will be overloaded with strange things, and I don't want you to panic. I won't. I promise. I just need help for my dog. I've never had to cure a dog, but it doesn't mean it can't be done. Thank you, Miss Vesper, Haley said, turning to watch Druid, who had snuck up behind her to stare at her. Except for the squirting sounds of urine hitting the bowl that Haley held underneath Druid, it was a quiet Sunday morning. Haley hoped that by the end of the day, after the ritual that Miss Vesper was going to perform, that afterwards it would all stay quiet and normal. Hale, I'm going to start setting up for the... the woman that's coming over, Akio said from the back door. Haley smiled and nodded. She was relieved that Akio was on board, even though he seemed to feel uncomfortable. He had also started seeing things recently, things he tried to explain to Haley. She didn't feel alone anymore, yet she wished she could spare him of the stress of it. With the urine sloshing around in the small bowl, Haley left Druid to play outside. She noticed that he was sprinted to the spot towards the back where the bones were retrieved. In all, the forensics team gathered close to 75 bones, most of which were cracked and splintered. They spared Akio and Haley the details, only mentioning that they would keep in touch as they do an investigation. 
She had revealed the article that she read from the library book and had agreed that they would consult a historian. Haley was almost positive that they were the murdered family. It was too much of a coincidence, even though she didn't believe in such things. As she poured the urine into a disposable plastic container with a zip bag in hand, she thought about when she was 12 and was invited to a slumber party where they played with a Ouija board. She had seen plenty of movies on ghosts and possessions. She believed every bit of it until that night. Her friends tricked her by using a magnet underneath the metal table and a magnetized Ouija glass. Haley recalled how deeply mortified she was when they all laughed at her. She truly thought that she was speaking to a spirit. She avoided looking over at the dugout corner of the yard, and she swiftly entered the house with Druid at her heels. Haley couldn't stop staring at Miss Vesper as she let her in. She was not what she had expected. Miss Vesper wore a chic blouse with razor slacks and wore her hair in a clip bob. Haley noticed her glancing about the living room and in the dining room where Akio had set up everything that Miss Vesper had asked for. Along with the plastic container of urine, there were three red scarves, seven candles, a box of matches, and a small knife. Haley watched as Miss Vesper pulled out from her tote bag seven figures and placed them in a circle along with the figures on the table. Akio came down the stairs and greeted Miss Vesper, who only nodded. I need you both to sit at the table. Where's your dog, Druid? Miss Vesper said. Haley and Akio sat. Druid, Haley called. Druid sauntered in from the guest room. He stared at Miss Vesper and raised his hackles without growling. Miss Vesper grabbed one of the red scarves from the table. Miss Haley, would you please wrap this around my hand and Druid's paw? Miss Vesper said as she knelt and took Druid's paw into hers. At first, Druid pulled away, but when Miss Vesper took his paw again, he didn't resist. Haley looked at Druid, and it appeared to her that he was curious. It was the same expression he would have when he saw a stray cat. With her limbs connected, Haley returned to her seat. She glanced at Akio, who sat across from her. He was staring at the objects on the table. Akio, please light up each of the candles, Miss Vesper said. Akio grabbed a box of matches and almost dropped them in his haste. He lit each candle slowly. Haley couldn't help watching Druid, who remained as still as a praying mantis, waiting for its prey to get close. Now, I need you both to wear these red scarves. As soon as you put them on, I will start, Miss Vesper said. Akio frowned at Haley. They helped each other place the scarves around their wrists. Miss Vesper began to chant while Druid continued to stare at her. Almost five minutes passed when Haley noticed that the dimmer in the dining room began to brighten. She glanced at the wall switch and then up at the lights. Miss Vesper continued to chant without realizing what had happened. The brightness dimmed down to almost no light. Haley's gaze rested upon the corner of the living room, her breath caught in her throat. The showery mass clung to the wall, expanding. What is that? Akio asked, having noticed it too. Haley couldn't answer as she gripped the edge of the table. Miss Vesper didn't stop chanting. Scrapey yanked Haley's attention towards the empty chair next to Akio. It was pulled out as if someone was about to sit down. Above Miss Vesper's chanting, there was a deep breathing sound. Haley's skin rippled in goosebumps as she realized it was coming from the chair. Druid began to cough. Haley wanted to see if Druid was all right, but she couldn't take her eyes from the empty chair. Miss Vesper stopped chanting. Haley jumped as Miss Vesper took the knife from the table. Haley glanced at Akio, who was leaning away from the chair, yet staring at the space. Druid whimpered and then growled. Haley turned to see both Miss Vesper and Druid were bleeding from their limbs. Druid tried to snatch his paw back, but Miss Vesper held on. She peered at the empty chair and spoke. Haley didn't understand what she had said and assumed it was part of the chanting. The chair slammed to the dining table and Haley screamed. Miss Haley, 
I need you to remove the lid from the container, Miss Vesper said, her voice a whisper. With trembling hands, Haley removed the lid. An acrid stench wafted into the dining room, and Haley's nose crinkled. Druid had stopped growling and had turned to look to the side. Miss Vesper's hand that was linked to Druid's paw snapped up into the air. Miss Vesper groaned and tried to pull back without letting go of Druid. It's trying to break the connection, Miss Vesper said. Haley watched as the tug of war ensued. We need to do something, Akio said as he gradually stood. Haley scanned the room and her eyes came across the container. As she stood, she took the container and tossed the contents towards the area between Miss Vesper and Druid. There was a splash as it hit the space. Urine dribbled down, taking the shape of a person. The tug of war stopped as the figure stood there. Miss Vesper released Druid's paw. Druid crouched and barked at the dripping figure. What remained of the urine rained down onto the floor. The figure was gone. Haley and Akio laid in bed with Druid cuddled in between them. The mid-morning light shone in through the crack of their bedroom curtains. Haley sighed. They were starting to forget the ordeal with Druid, a month having gone by without a trace of the figure, though they still used a nightlight to sleep with. Haley's phone rang. She listened for some time with Akio watching her expression change. She lowered the phone. Who was that? Akio asked. It was the forensic team, Haley said as she bit her lower lip. They had finished their investigation. You remember I told you about the mind mogul, Willard Bulger? Akio nodded. One of those bones was of him. But I thought he was the one who was possibly the murderer. Yes, that's true. The other bones were slightly older and belonged to the family members that lived in this house in the late 1800s. It was a family of five, a mother, a father, and their three daughters. I, I don't understand how Willard ended up with their remains if he was the one that might have killed them. Not all the family members were buried. The forensics found the mother and the three daughters. Akio frowned, and then his eyes widened. The father is missing. Did he... Haley nodded. I don't think Willard was the killer. His exoneration holds up. I remember reading that he was known for having mistresses, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was having an affair with the mother. You think the father killed them? Akio asked, blinking rapidly. But why kill the three daughters? Haley shrugged. Maybe he hated his wife and thought that his daughters wouldn't be any different from her? Druid raised his head and stared at Haley. Hi, this is JD, creator of Chillingly Bizarre Podcast. Before the credits roll, I wanted to share some great news. Chillingly Bizarre has its own website. Check out chillinglybizarre.com for transcripts, blog posts, YouTube versions, and of course, listen to your favorite episodes. Don't forget to subscribe for alerts and newsletter. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Chillingly Bizarre Podcast. This was Episode 7, Season 2, titled The Canine Possession and it was written by J.D.W. The episode was narrated by J.D.W. All characters are voiced by J.D.W. Credits go to freesound.org and its following contributors. Dave Dud 101, Carol 27, Girk Ball, B Music 92, Raytana, Phil Soko, The Woodland Nomad, Ebans, Meg McDuffie, Joe Dozer, NYX Lervig, Jed X2B, Charles Art, Soundsmurf23, Fifth Gertie, Fedor Ogon, and Danilo FX. Please leave a review on the Spotify app or anywhere else you listen to the podcast.